G'day there, King's Kids. I am glad you are back with us again, our members of God's royal family. Uh, isn't it just wonderful to be children of the King of Kings? Uh, we will be looking in the Bible at Genesis chapter 18 today and another story about Abraham. Uh, our topic today is looking out for others. Uh, anyway, uh, let's get on with it. kids a couple of weeks ago we tried a readers theater together and it worked great so today we are going to try another one remember to read along with the words on the screen where everyone speaks here we go there is a time to speak and a time to be silent but, but we must never be silent when we have good news to share Good news about Jesus. <laughs> that can spread joy everywhere. There is a time to speak. And a time to be silent. But, but we must never be silent when we need to tell the truth. When we know something's wrong. We must speak up in our youth. There is a time to speak. And a time to be silent. But, but we must never be silent when someone needs our help and they cannot speak up for themselves. We, we must, must see their needs. And not just look at our own. God gave us two ears. To listen. Listen. Yes, listen. To the needs of others. And then... Speak up for them when they need a voice to help. Jesus did this for us. He came to speak for us. So, let's follow his lead. Don't hold back good from those who deserve it. <laughs> Be silent. And listen. And then speak up. For those who cannot speak for themselves. Hello boys and girls. It's Granny Grace here again with another story from God's special book. 
Do you remember Abram, the man who listened to God? God changed his name to Abraham and he continued to serve God. It was hot and still. The heat shimmered across the valley. Abram looked down from where he sat in the shade near his tent and saw one, two, three men coming his way. Please join me, said Abraham. You look hot and tired. Rest a while while I get you some water. The men sat down. Abraham went into his tent. We have visitors, he said to his wife, Sarah. Please make a meal for them. Sarah, Abraham's wife, listened as the men talked. Your wife, Sarah, will have a baby by this time next year, said one of the men. Sarah's eyes opened wide and she began to giggle to herself. She was far too old to have a baby. Why is Sarah giggling? asked one of the strangers. Suddenly, Abraham knew that his guest was the Lord. When it was time to leave, Abraham walked with his guests down towards the valley. The city of Sodom lay below them. The Lord said, The city of Sodom is very wicked. I am going to destroy it. Abraham knew there were wicked people in Sodom, but he also knew Lot, his nephew, lived there. Lord, he said, if there are 50 good people in Sodom, will you spare the city? Yes, answered the Lord. I will not destroy Sodom if there are 50 good people living there. Abraham spoke out again. What if there are 45 good people, he asked. Yes, I will not destroy Sodom if there are 45 good people living there. Abraham kept asking six more times until he got to just 10 people. Yes, said the Lord, I will not destroy Sodom if there are 10 good people living there. Abraham knew he had done all he could to save the city. He knew the Lord would save Sodom if just 10 good people lived there. Abraham spoke out for the people of Sodom. Boys and girls, how can you speak out for others this week? Perhaps you might see someone being mean to another person at school. Will you speak out for that person? I hope you will. Today's Bible verse is Philippians 2 verses 4. Do not look upon your own interests, but on the interests of others. My name's Kyra, and today we're going to be making some of your own chalk. The things you will need are some bowls, some spoons, a Ziploc bag, some scissors, some food colouring, and some eggshells, about six to ten to make one chalk. You will also need all-purpose flour and hot water. The first thing you need to do is wash and dry your eggshells. Then you need to crush them into a fine powder. I'm going to use a food processor to help. Make it into a fine powder. Now into your bag, put one teaspoon of flour and one teaspoon of hot water. You might need a bit more water if it's too powdery. Now add one tablespoon of egg powder or two dessert spoons. I'm now going to add my food colouring. Hmm, I choose green. 
One, two, three. That should be enough food colouring for now. Now we just got to mix it thoroughly. Now we can snip the corner of the bag off and then put it in our mould. Now comes the hardest bit. You have to wait a couple days for it to dry. Luckily, I prepared another one earlier. Carefully take it out of its mould. Now it's time to use it. Hmm, I wonder what God would want me to say. Maybe, you're loved. Right, that. God calls for us to speak out to others and look after them. Leaving kind messages might help others feel better. If you have an alley near you or a pathway, you can do some drawing. Maybe you could make some chalk like this. Hi everyone, my name is Nurse Betty. One of the things I love to do is to teach girls and boys how to stay healthy. Today, I'd like to talk with you about your fingernails. Have a look at your hands, King's Kids. On the end of each of your fingers and your thumbs, you will see a hard part of your body. These are your fingernails. Nails are made up of a protein called keratin, and they have some very important jobs. They protect your fingertips and the area of soft tissue surrounding them from injury. They help us to pick up small things, and they are also handy if you have an itch somewhere and need to scratch it. Nails look pink because of the network of tiny blood vessels underneath which feed the nail bed. Your fingernails grow about two and a half millimetres every month, and your toenails grow about one millimetre each month. Because toenails grow more slowly, you do not have to cut them as often as you need to cut your fingernails. It is important that you look after your nails, even the nails on your feet, and you can do this by washing around and under your nails every day, cutting your nails regularly. Fingernails can be filed with a nail file or you can cut them with nail clippers or scissors. If your nails are too short, the very tender nail bit can be exposed. This will soon be covered with your growing nail, but the fingertip can be really sore for a while. Some people have a bad habit of biting their nails. They might do this when they are worried about something, but often nothing bad is happening. They just bite them. If you have this habit, talk to your mum or dad to get some help in breaking the habit. Doctors often look at nails to see how healthy a person is. Pink nails show that the person has enough iron in their blood, that the blood is circulating well around the body. A healthy diet will help your nails grow strong. King's kids, remember that Jesus loves you. Take care of your body and take care of each other. Ah, good day there, boys and girls, and welcome along to Balloon Kaboom. And again, I've got my friend here with me, Pastor Darren. G'day there, Pastor Darren. Hi, Arnie. Hi, boys and girls. So good to be back again. Yeah, it's awesome to be back, Pastor Darren. Now, what are we going to be making uh, with these balloons today? Well, today I have a tiny blue balloon. A tiny blue balloon. Yes, I'm mm -hmm. going to inflate it. Yeah, I could write a song about that. <laughs> could, Arnie. Mm -hmm. Yes. Tie it off. Yep, tie it off. And I'm going to make a long bubble. A long bubble. And curve it across the top. Right. Tie it off. Yep. 
pinch the middle. And pinch the middle of the long bubble. Two pinch twists in the middle. Yeah, two pinch twists. There it is. Ah, uh, there's what, Pastor Darren? It's a work in progress. Uh, another work in progress. You know, we're all works in progress. All twists and shapes us into his amazing creation. Another long bubble. Curve it off. Yep. I don't need this bit. I'm going to just break it off. Yep. I'm going to get rid of it. There One, it goes. two, three. And tie it in. Right, tie it in so it doesn't go down. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now I'm going to give it some arms. Some arms? Okay. Need some arms? It needs arms, eh? Okay. What do you think it might be, boys and girls? And the other side? Needs two arms. That's right, two arms. Okay. Can you see what it is, uh, boys and girls? That might be a clue. It could be. Mm. I need to tie a string in, Arnie, just to cross the back. Oh, tie a string in, okay. Hmm, that's interesting. To hold it on. Right. And the other side. And tie it to the other side as well. Hmm. And there it is. Uh, and there it is, that's finished now, is it, Pastor Darren? Yep, and you guess what it is, Arnie? Um, what do you think it might be, boys and girls? Oh, I'm gonna have a guess, Pastor Darren. Oh, I think it might be a butterfly with legs. A butterfly? Yeah, a bit like a butterfly. A butterfly but... with arms, sorry. <laughs> Haven't seen butterflies with arms. Here, this might help you see more clearly. Let me put them on you. Oh, look at that. And you might be able to guess, boys oh. and girls, and what it might be. Oh, and I can see you too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, these, these are pretty cool, Pastor Darren. Can you see clearly now? Yeah, I can see clearly now. Yeah, it's great. G'day there, boys and girls. Uh, I think they're a pair of glasses, Pastor Darren. That's right, Arnie, a pair of glasses. You know, when you wear glasses, you can see all sorts of things you never saw before. Mm, that's true, and sometimes if you wear the wrong glasses, you can't see things. That's right. <laughs> Gotta go see your optometrist and get the right prescription. Mm. But you know what wearing glasses reminds me of? Looking out for others. Today's story is about Abraham who always looked out for others and cared for them. When we see glasses, we can think about the fact that we can look out for others too. Oh yeah, we can. That's fantastic, Pastor Darren. Look out for others. Yep. Now I've never had to wear glasses before, Pastor Darren. Have you got 20-20 vision? Oh, I must have. <laughs> it's good vision. <laughs> Those pairs suit you, I think, aren't they? They really suit me? I think they do. What do you think, boys and girls? Yeah, I, I reckon uh, I reckon they're pretty cool, Pastor Darren. Take them home and show your wife. I might, it might scare her. <laughs> the dog might bark even. Yeah. Might recognise me. I'm so cool. Anyway, take them home and talk to her about looking out for others. Okay, Pastor Darren, I'm going to look out for others and I hope you are going to do the same thing, boys and girls. Anyway, it's time to go now. So from Balloon Kaboom, I will catch you next time. See you, Pastor Darren. Bye, Arnie. Bye, boys and girls. Oh, I'm going to go now. <laughs> hey, good day there, Andy. You like my new tree stumps? Oh, yeah, they're great, Shane. Yeah, I was down the sawmill the other day talking to the owner, Jack. And he said, hey, Shane, I've got these hollow logs that have come in. They're no good to us. Um, do you want them? So I asked Mum and Dad and they said, yeah, and I made them into sort of tree cubby houses. And I thought they'd be really good to do Discovery Bibles in. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Hey, Andy, now that we've read the passages twice, um, let's do the uh, summary in our own words. But first, let's pray. Dear God, please guide us. Thank you. Hey, Andy, I'll go first. Our passage today comes from Genesis 18, 20 to 33. God wasn't happy with what was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah, so we wanted to destroy them. 
But Abraham asked if God was going to destroy the righteous with the wicked and pleaded that if there were 50 righteous people, that God would save them. Oh, and then the Lord said, If I find 50 righteous people, I will spare Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham then spoke up. What if there is 45 people? The Lord said, I will not destroy them. Once again, Abraham asked, what about 40 people? Then down to 30 and 20. Each time the Lord said he would not destroy the cities. Then Abraham asked one last time, what if only 10 righteous people can be found? God answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy them. Wow, that's a pretty amazing reading. Each time Abraham asked, God was willing to save the city for less righteous people. Let's do the Discovery Bible questions now, Shane. Yep. I really like how they help us to understand the Bible in a new way. What's new? Well, what's new to me, Andy? is that in two cities, there couldn't be found 10 righteous people. That's true, Shane. They must have been pretty bad places. I reckon. Hey, what surprises you, Andy? Oh, I'm surprised at how many times Abraham asked God to drop the number of righteous people. He must have really wanted to save the cities. I think he wanted to save the people more than the cities, Andy. Oh, I guess that's true, Shane. God does want us to look out for others. What don't you understand? Well, Andy, what exactly does righteous mean? Well, I think it means to be right with God. So you would be kind, considerate, honourable and just. I guess God was looking for people who were trying to be like this and be right with him. I like that, Andy. Hmm, righteous. I want to be right with God too. Hey, Andy, um, what will you obey or apply? Well, I'm going to actually ask God to show me ways that I can serve others. Hmm, I like serving others, Andy. I'm going to do that too. What will you share with someone this week, Shane? Well, I'm going to share this week how much Abraham was concerned for others who did not know about God yet. And just like Abraham, I want to help others to find their way to Jesus too. That sounds good, Shane. Let's pray to finish, shall we? Yeah. Dear God, thank you for your word. Help us to follow you. Amen. Amen. Let's call it Stumps, Andy. That sounds good, Shane. Yeah, see you later. Bye.
Everything and shine for the Lord. Uh, you can be the hands and feet of Jesus everywhere you go. Uh, one way we can do this is to speak out for others just like Abraham did. Uh, when you see something that is not right, uh, speak up. Uh, when someone has been mean to someone else, uh, say something. Uh, it is good to be part of God's royal family, King Skips. Uh, but did you know that there are so many people who still don't know about Jesus and what he has done for them? Uh, you can look for opportunities to share Jesus with others. Uh, after the Discovery Bible reading today, Shane is going to try and help others to find their way to Jesus. Uh, why don't you try this too, King's kids? Uh, anyway, uh, it's time to go now. Oh, I look forward to catching up with you all again next time. Uh, so take care, stay safe, and God bless. So I will see-